The WASP represented uh, the U.S. Navy at kind of the lowest point uh, after the start of, of World War II. Uh, but, you know, her pilots, her air crew, uh, they were the ones who held the line against the Japanese uh, when the Japanese had superior fighter aircraft, superior torpedo planes, uh, better torpedoes. Uh, and yet, with their courage and sacrifice, uh, like I said, they held the line until the United States could bring on its, its major industrial might and, and produce more carriers than the Japanese could ever, ever hope to, to manage. But there were, in the first year of the war, it was, it was touch and go. And so those who served at that time deserve you know, the gratitude of our nation for, for holding the Japanese back. The WASP was uh, one of our primary targets that we had established with uh, Mr. Allen uh, quite some time ago. Uh, and it was, it was a, kind of at the top of the list because it's uh, one of the capital ships uh, and it also had uh, a lot of aircraft on it. The first thing we need to do is, is kind of go through all of this data and organize it and prioritize the information and, and apply priority weighting to the information so we can try and understand you know, which we find more credible than others. And, and a lot of it is um, kind of gut feel and putting yourself kind of in their place, in their shoes at that particular time when these things are going on. Um, so we take all of this information and we go back through it piece by piece, uh, document by document, um, line by line, position by position, and we just, we go through it, we discuss it, we, you know, uh, scrutinize it and make changes. For instance, you've got the Lansdowne position down here, which is about 17, 18 miles from the rest of, of where the action was happening, not to mention least of which is the, the navigator's position from WASP where it sank. So, um, you know, this is kind of an anomaly. It may not, it, it's probably uh, of less weighting than the other, the other information that we have, which has, you know, corroborating data to go with it. So I, I go to the archives, I get logbooks, I do re-navigation from what I can gather in the logbooks. If there's track charts from uh, action reports that I can integrate into the navigation, that's even better. If I can find positions uh, that the navigator put into the deck log, other than their 8 in the morning, 12 and 8 p.m. Uh, positions, better still. And that's an uh, example of it right here. We have the three positions that they take a day, 8 a.m., noon, and 8 p.m. And, uh, and they usually also, uh, in the logbook, they write down any course changes, speed changes, uh, so that is the mainly the go-to uh, book that you're looking for, although at this point in time, in uh, late 1942, they, they were transitioning to war diaries. So in 1943, you really don't have deck logs.